Welcome to our presentation on growing yacon in Florida. This presentation is adapted from the article Yacon, a potential tuberous crop for Florida, which is online at the provided link. This is part of a series on Asian vegetable production. However, yacon is not native to Asia. It is native to South America. Its recent introduction to Asia and Oceania has provided useful information on how to move this crop to Florida. Yacon is considered a functional food due to the high nutraceutical and pharmaceutical value of its tubers. Its shoots can be used as a high-protein forage for livestock husbandry. Yacon tubers have become an attractive food in U.S. vegetable markets. Florida is a major producer of specialty crops in the nation, and growers have expressed interest in yacon production. This presentation aims to introduce yacon as a potential crop to Florida growers and the extension community by providing information on its propagation, production, and utilization, as well as its nutritional value. Yacon is a member of the sunflower family Asteraceae in the genus Smolanthus. It resembles its relative Jerusalem artichoke. While Jerusalem artichoke grows best in temperate climates, yacon grows best in the tropics and subtropics, making it an ideal alternative for Florida. It is not closely related to jicama, taro, or arrowroot, but it is processed in much the same way as these crops. It's thought that Sanchifolius is a hybrid of several other species of Smolanthus due to its allopolyploidy. This means it has an irregular number of chromosomes, and therefore producing viable seeds can be difficult. Yacon is native to the Andes Mountains, where it is an important indigenous crop. The name Yacon comes from the Quechua language and refers to the tuber's high water content. Common names often refer to the red or brown skin on the tubers. Yacon was globalized in the 1980s when brought from Ecuador to New Zealand, then to Japan. Over the subsequent decades, Yacon has been trialed in countries including Brazil, Korea, China, and the United States. Yacon is a perennial herb that grows up to 10 feet tall. Its stems are green to purple, cylindrical, hollow, and covered in hairy structures. New leaves grow from the main stem. The leaves are ovate or hastate, meaning spear-shaped, and they are covered in trichomes which produce terpenoids to protect the plant. Yacon is day-neutral at low altitudes, meaning it sets flowers regardless of day length. Yacon flowers are relatively small, about one and a half inches. Like other sunflowers, they are compound in fluorescences. The rays on the outside produce seeds, and the discs on the inside produce pollen. Yacon's distinctive underground growth includes two structures. The rhizome is a perennial structure from which new stems and roots grow. The tubers grow from the roots and store the plant's nutrients, producing up to 20 per yacon plant. So, unlike in potato production, seed tubers are not used for propagation. Yacon can be propagated by seed, stem cutting, tissue culture, and rhizome. Seed propagation is uncommon, because two varieties must breed to produce seed, many varieties have sterile pollen, and not all varieties can produce abundant seeds. Stems can be easily rooted, and rooted cuttings are sometimes used for production. Disease-free, tissue-cultured liners are available in Florida, and the liners can be directly planted in the field. But for high-yield production in the same season, rhizomes are widely used as the primary propagule. At harvest, rhizomes are separated from stems and tuberous roots and then refrigerated. About two months before production, rhizomes are placed in potting soil to allow sprouting. Sprouted rhizomes are separated and placed in 6-inch or 8-inch pots filled with potting soil to allow plant growth. Then, the young plants can be directly transplanted into the field. In traditional cultivation, slash-and-burn techniques or plowed fields from a previous crop supplement carbon in the soil. Mulching with straw or similar practices can be applied to supplement Florida's sandy soils. The plants produce higher tuber yields when spaced 16 inches apart and rows 3 feet apart, but higher profits have been yielded with 20-inch spacing and rows 3.5 feet apart. Yacon plants grow best at 64 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but can tolerate air temperatures as high as 105 degrees Fahrenheit and as low as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Hoop houses are a cost-effective protection from aberrant freezes. 
In Florida, this crop takes approximately 180 days to reach maturity from planting. It should therefore be grown over summer seasons in North Florida and year-round in the parts of South Florida which don't freeze. The crop prefers loamy, sandy soils that are acidic to slightly alkaline and rich in nutrients. The roots of the plant can become misshapen in gravelly loams, such as in the Miami Ridge in southern Florida. The plant's leafy canopy facilitates transpiration, making it very productive at high temperatures with plenty of water. However, overwatering can crack the roots and make them susceptible to disease. Therefore, steady water supply through methods such as drip irrigation benefit yukon yields. Irrigation management advice can be found in Chapter 3 of the Vegetable Production Handbook of Florida. Nitrogen application can increase nutrient content and tuber yield. Ammonium sulfate and controlled release fertilizers are common choices. Yacon currently has no specific fertilizer recommendation in Florida. Farmers can instead use the recommendations for lettuce, which is in the sunflower family along with yacon, and potato, which grows similarly and uses similar production methods. These recommendations are 200 pounds per acre of nitrogen and 0, 100, or 120 to 150 pounds per acre of either phosphorus pentoxide or potassium oxide for high, medium, and low soil test indices respectively using the Melic 3 soil extraction method. Some recent studies have demonstrated competitive Yacon tuber production at half the nitrogen input of potato. If these results translate to Florida soil, the crop will have a definitive advantage over potato production. Remember to implement the four R's of nutrient stewardship by using the right source of fertilizer at the right rate during the right time of the growing season and then the right place in the field. Please see Chapter 2 in the Vegetable Production Handbook of Florida for a full explanation of these principles. Preliminary evaluation of Yacon in Florida showed that mealybug and whitefly infestations occurred in greenhouses. However, disease and pest problems were not encountered during field production except for nematodes that were found in the roots. Yacon leaves and stems have pest-resistant and antimicrobial properties due to their mono, di, and sesequiterpene compounds. The trichomes present on the leaves and stems are a second defense mechanism against pathogens. Generally, the main diseases occurring on Yacon include Fusarium, Sclerotinia, and Alternaria. Decaea didanti, formerly classified as Nerwinia pathogen, has caused stem wilting outside Yacon's native range. Meloidogyne nematodes are common pathogens throughout the southeastern United States. The bacteria Klebsiella oxytoca and Erwinia eretovora have been applied to leaves as biological control to regulate the plant's microbiome. The major pests damaging this crop are Areolamax banana slugs and Closcinella cinea sunflower patch caterpillars. Leaves, roots, and flowers can also be damaged by Liriomyces species of leaf miner, by the North American native cucumber beetle Diabotrica undesempunctata, by the black cutworm Agratus ypsilon, and by bird grasshopper Cystocerca species. Underground structures have also been damaged by scarab beetles and Betsy beetles abroad. Sucking insects such as green leafhoppers in the Empoasca genus and aphids in the aphis genus have lower occurrence. For cultural pest control, it is recommended to use raised beds with plastic culture to minimize weed pressure. You can also use straw mulch for the same purpose in organic production. Ladybird beetles in the Cosinellidae family have been reported targeting pest insects as a form of biological control. Contact pyrethroids and systemic neocotinoids have been applied as chemical insect control, but because Yacon is new to Florida, registered chemicals are not yet available. Chapter 19 of the Vegetable Production Handbook provides a list of biopesticides which may be used instead. Both partial harvests for home gardeners and one-time complete harvests for commercial production may be practiced. In a partial harvest, Tubers are collected while keeping the rhizome and stem intact. In a complete harvest, rhizomes and tubers are both harvested while the stem is removed for mulching or livestock feed. The rhizome and root can be harvested mechanically or manually. Once yacon is harvested, the tubers begin to metabolize their sugars at about the same rate as potatoes. Refrigeration extends the shelf life of yacon from 4 months at 50 degrees Fahrenheit 
to a year at 35 degrees Fahrenheit. If your operation can afford it, vacuum drying the yacon also effectively extends shelf life. Yacon roots can be sliced for use as a raw vegetable and pairs well in both fruit and leafy salads. Because the roots containing 8 to 12 degrees bricks brown quickly, they are rarely cooked but are used to produce yacon syrup with 73 degrees bricks. An extract from yacon tuberous roots is used as a sweetening agent. It can also be processed into stews and chips, fermented into pickles, and made into desserts. Shankaka is a concentrated sweetener obtained from the boiling process and crystallization of the root juice. Additionally, just like agar, arrowroot powder, and tapioca flour, yacon roots can also be used as a yogurt stabilizer or thickener and a low-calorie sweetener in cheese and milk drinks. Yacon's tuberous roots store carbohydrates in the form of fructo-oligosaccharides, which are short chains of fructans. The tubers contain more than 70% water. By dry weight, they consist of 6.4% to 70% fructo-oligosaccharides, as well as 2% to 3% proteins. Yacon has a low glycemic index. The glycemic index is a scale from 0 to 100 used to rank carbohydrates based on their effect on blood glucose levels. Pure glucose has the highest GI of 100, while foods that are quickly digested into glucose have a high glycemic index. A low GI diet with foods such as oatmeal, carrots, peas, and other fruits and vegetables can curb blood sugar spikes and lower risk of diabetes. Yacon tubers have a GI of approximately 34, and thus they are considered a healthy and functional food. Its fructo-oligosaccharides are considered prebiotics because they favor beneficial gut flora such as Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus, and actively reduce pathogenic bacteria such as Clostridium and E. coli. Data from human studies are scarce, but the data collected from research on animals clearly indicate that oligofructose has a significant impact on the immune system and may possibly reduce the risk of cancer. Yacon is rich in mineral nutrients such as phosphorus, potassium, calcium, iron, copper, manganese, and zinc. It also contains vitamins, such as retinol, vitamin A1, thiamine, vitamin B1, riboflavin, vitamin B2, niacin, vitamin B3, carotin, and ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Leaves are an excellent source of protein for livestock, containing 11% to 17% protein by dry weight. Infusions of the leaves and roots are a source of phenolic compounds, flavonoids, and tryptophan. Regular consumption of yacon roots can stimulate calcium intestinal absorption, regulate serum cholesterol, modulate thrombosis, increase immune system efficiency, and reduce allergenic digestive reactions in mammals. Yacon is a valuable crop that may become increasingly profitable in Florida due to its day neutrality for rhizome and root formation. The crop can reduce soil erosion, tolerate partial shade, and provide livestock forage, hence it is ideal for agroforestry systems. There is potential to increase the profit of fields currently used for potato production, both through decreased fertilizer input and higher market prices for the tubers. This vegetable can increase market and food diversity and enhance the competitiveness of Florida's vegetable industry. The state's unique geography and climate present advantages for yacon production. Florida growers can grow this root vegetable with competitive economic returns. For more information, please refer to the linked EDIS publication for this presentation, and feel free to check out some of these sources from which we have assembled this presentation. Thank you.